The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from Florida as uh, we are surviving Hurricane Adalia. If you're in the hurricane's path, it's still bearing down. We get some good rain outside right now. I'm in central Florida. We are very fortunate where we are, Tampa, St. Pete. We missed the mark in a big way. Uh, 20, 30, maybe 40 mile per an hour gusts around here, but very fortunate. Uh, up by Crystal River, Gainesville, Jacksonville, even on the east coast of the country up from there. The hurricane's still bearing down. We're getting some wind. We're getting some rain. But we are open today, folks. And my dad's got a live Gold Report subscriber webinar coming up at 4 p.m. Eastern time today. Don't miss it. We are open all day. He'll be in there live from 3 till 4. He'll be doing his webinar live from 4 till 5 for Gold Report subscribers. We get into the market action this morning. We got the S&Ps up by about four points right now, trading at 45.10. NASDAQ 100, we're up by about 10 points, quite the acceleration yesterday, right? All the markets, you talk about a skyrocket, man, 400 points in the NASDAQ 100, up to 15,468. We're just off those levels this morning. Dow, I mean, check it out. We're up 1,000 points from where we were last Friday. 1,000 points, man. We're, you got your Dow 35,000 hat ready? It's, uh, we're about 40 points away from that price level. The Dow making new pre-market session highs right now, up by about two tenths percent. You get the Russell in negative territory by three points. Crude catch, catches a bid yesterday. We're hanging above eighty-one dollars right now at eighty-one fifty-seven. There's that gold contract for you, man. We got gold volatility yesterday, up from nineteen forty to nineteen sixty-five. We're extending those gains today. Great day for a Gold Report webinar as we get some action in gold. Check it out. See what my dad's going to talk about this afternoon at four o'clock. And what do we got? We got the ten-year. At 111, 111, just like that, man. We were at 109 for a lot of last week, right? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we we're at 109. Actually, almost came back down on that Friday spike. Now, you did get a roll here in terms of going from contract to contract. You see the dotted line as we jump to a different contract. That spiked the price up a bit, but nonetheless, we got yields lower today with the tenure at 111. We jump over to the dollar index. As we have lower yields, you're seeing a weaker dollar. You talk about some volatility in currencies, man, from 104.40 down to 103.18. Great day to be talking to our man, Teddy Kegstat. We talked to him at 40 past the hour. So we'll talk to our man, Kevin Hanks, coming up after the first break. We'll talk to our man, Teddy Kegstat, coming up at 40 past the hour. Great day to talk to those two gentlemen. As always, dollar weaker, lower yields. We got a positive market. And with that, we jump over to the volatility index this morning. Backing off a bit, 1434 on that VIX right now. All right, let's jump to the story of the day. You could say second quarter GDP growth rate cut to 2.1% on business spending is what the number is here. So you got GDP rising at a revised 2.1% annualized pace in the second quarter below the government's previous estimate. The downward revision uh, to GDP reflected less inventory and non-residential fixed income household spending was revised higher to a 1.7% pace. A gauge of economic, uh, excuse me, a gauge of income generated and cost incurred from producing goods and services rose 0.5%. Average two-year measure is at 1.3%. Corporate profits, the report also included the government's first estimate of corporate profits, adjusted pre-tax. Corporate profits fell 0.4% in the April to June period, reflecting a drop at financial corporations from a year earlier, profits were down 6.5%, right? So they dropped 0.4% April to June. They dropped 6.5% from a year earlier. A measure of US profit margins widened after tax profits as a share of gross value added for non-financial corps. I'm going through a lot of numbers, but they're interesting stuff here. Rose to 14.3% from 13.8. Margins going up at a time when profits are going down. Very interesting statistics living in such an inflationary era right now. Uh, meanwhile, key inflation gauges watched closely by the Fed were revised lower. PCE, 3.7% pace, the lowest in two years. That might be the biggest one out there. They bury the lead at the end of the article. Uh, P 
PCE, the Fed's in preferred inflation gauge, okay, core PCE, the preferred preferred inflation gauge, rising at point three point seven percent pace in the second quarter, the slowest in more than two years. So we hit that number. The markets like it. They liked it yesterday, man. Uh, and upward we go from here as we are at 4510 right now in the S&Ps. You back things up on a little bit of a longer term picture. Let's take this off there. We're going to take that one off there. And we're going to take the Fibonacci number off there just for some clarity here. And yeah, we're chopping around near the recent highs, man. We make a high of 4635, we'll call it, back in July. And just like that, we're back above 4500 within a stone's throw of 4800 right now. We're coming into Labor Day weekend. We got a little bit of a storm bearing down. And let's talk a little bit of storm. Why not? Adalia makes landfall category three. Uh, 125 miles an hour, I think. So it rolls into a sparse, sparsely populated area in the Big Bend region, as they say. I'm still talking about potentially $10 billion in losses, man. Uh, where is this one? Tarpon Springs is where they got this one. I mean, that's unfortunate, man. Look at those downtown businesses. A lot of mom and pop businesses down there, I'm sure. Usually you have that area bustling on a normal summer day in the downtown of florida but not the case man category three wins yeah 125 miles an hour wednesday slammed into thankfully the sparsely populated big bend region about 55 miles north of cedar key as it goes northeast and it's going to keep going man if you're in that path stay safe out there folks and yeah um, be sure if you saw had some big surges anywhere near the water i mean they were talking about man the winds here 125 miles an hour i think we've gotten all so used to Category five, right? Ah, it's rolling in at 145. It's rolling in at 150, 160 even. That this one seems like it's nothing, but it's not nothing if it's in your path, man. You got the airport closed. 500 flights in and out of Florida canceled. Not surprising there. Uh, but yeah, so we dodged this one in terms of could be worse, but we are still early in the season, man. Early in the season, to put it lightly. Um, and look at this. This is what they do in Tampa General Hospital. So you can imagine these hospitals that are crucial, they really have to be protected in terms of making sure they don't flood out because that's where people go for, for help in disasters like this. Um, they even talk about, we'll talk a little bit of OJ. Most of the key citrus areas in Central Florida should not be impacted. If you think about loading up on uh, orange juice concentrate, not sure that would be the play as they avoid the worst case there as Central Florida are not gonna get it. Cotton crops could be damaged, along with fruits and vegetables. The main commodities of corn and soybeans should be fine, as they're talking about. So we weathered the storm. We got some good rain, but that's about it, thankfully, in Tampa. Offices are open, folks, and we are open today with live program. All day going on at TFNN, getting ready for that live subscriber event for the Gold Report coming up today at 4 p.m. Eastern time with my dad. Don't miss it, folks. It's been a few years, almost four years since he's done a Gold Report subscriber webinar, and he's doing it because he's excited about where gold is at right now, man. And listen, he's, my dad's had some great calls, man. He was talking about this dollar index and yields uh, last week. And look at the reversal. Okay, dollar just gives up a full point. We'll talk to our man, as I mentioned, Teddy Kegstat. We'll break down some of those commodities later in the hour. We'll be coming back talking to our man, Kevin Hicks from Schwab Network, Fast Market, coming up at 12, their program. But we'll talk to Kevin right after this break. Stay tuned, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 
45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P right now, flat trading at 4506. You get the Dow barely in the red right now, negative by seven. Excuse me, you get the Dow barely in the positive right now by 54. The NASDAQ 100 barely in the red right now by just five points. With that in mind, folks, let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, right here, 12 noon Eastern time from the Schwab Network, Fast Market with your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White. The outstanding team at Schwab Network, they got some great guests, folks. They always walk you through some hypothetical trade setups. Uh, and this morning, we got a weaker dollar. We got lower yields, and we got a mixed market. Kevin Hinks, what do you think about this market, man? Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Glad to hear your voice. Uh, you know, today, we got a lot of economic data today. The future's down. I think it's coming in at night. Look of this economic data is that the overall economy is starting to soften slightly. That's why you see the dollar lower. That's why I see yields lower. And at the end of the day, that's good for stocks. Let's see how long it lasts, though, Tommy, because we still have inflation data coming up in, with income and outlays on Thursday and payrolls on Friday. So we've got a lot of data still to go. But so far this week, Tommy, the, the economic data with uh, what we saw this morning in GDP, what we saw from ADP, uh, you know, so far with yesterday's jolt number, the economic data has been pretty favorable for the Fed and thus for the stock market, Tommy. Yeah, what do you think about the conversation, Kevin? We got the 10-year yield now sitting at about 4.1%. I think we're at almost four and a quarter um, going back just a few days ago. We're sitting at 4.1%, and always the conversation is good news, good news, is, is good news, bad news. It seems like the market right now is okay with a little bit of a lower yield, a little bit of a weaker dollar. Um, how does your brain think about this conversation where you see a, a weakened GDP number potentially, and the market says, well, we potentially like that. How are you approaching some of these data points, Kevin? Because you say we get jobs number on Friday. Uh, I think it's so interesting sometimes where you say to somebody, you know, okay, even if you guess the jobs number correct right now, I'm trying to do the math in my own head saying, 
how is the market going to receive a number because we're looking for almost that Goldilocks scenario and the market's been getting it to a certain degree. But what do you think about that number in terms of if it's too hot, then maybe we worry about the Fed. If it's too weak, is it a good number? How are you kind of wrapping your brain around these numbers where are we looking for good is good or how do you, how do you think about that one right now, Kevin? Yeah, if you put up a 10-day a, a 10 chart on the thickest sort of platform of yields, the 10-year yields hit 436 a week ago, Tuesday. Wow. So, take them down and that's going to favor stocks, Tommy. And I think the economic data that may be hinting that the Fed might be closer to done, which would mean, you know, Europe and other countries that still have to be hawkish, that would cause the dollar to weaken based on that, right? If, if other countries have to be more hawkish than us, their currency will rise against ours. I think that's why you saw the dollar break yesterday on that data. I think that's why you're seeing it softer again this morning on that data. Both those scenarios that I talked about, Tommy, those favor stocks. Now, again, we're not through the week yet, and we've got two big inflation data data points coming up with PCE, which is expected to go from 3 to 3.3% in the headline and 4.1 to 4.2% in the core. So... You've got that number that's coming out tomorrow. Then you've got wages on Friday that right now the consensus is it's going to go from 4.4% and stay flat at 4.4% year over year. Let's see how the market takes that data into account. Because at the end of the day, it's inflation, Tommy, that we're looking at, and prices matter. So, yeah, we're having good data so far. Jerome Powell's getting a softening labor market without hurting unemployment, right, the, the, the jobs data something that he basically talked about so yeah we, we got to watch the, infer, the you know the inflation data is the key for this week Tommy all this is just the uh, ad, you know leading up to the big data we're getting Thursday and Friday you talked about it that non-farm payroll number maybe the number one data point of the month right include some wages in yeah. there we got a lot of inflation um, but you've told us many times that that might be the number one and, and we get it on Friday, man. And as you were talking about it, Kevin, I have the dollar index. I had the yields up there. Pretty remarkable when you talk about it, the dollar, we're at 103.11 the last two days, quite a pullback. And we're actually yeah. back where we were kind of last Tuesday, though, which, man, when you look at where yields were, so a little bit of divergence. We had the Jackson Hole in there on Friday. But, boy, we got some volatility, man, with yields, with the dollar across the board. Uh, with that in mind, Kevin, we're nearing the end of the earnings season. I know you guys are still pulling some equities out that you were talking about on Fast Market. Do you guys have any equities coming up today at 12 noon? Yeah, we have books today. For the belt today, we've got a new presentation on Chewy, the online uh, pet store. And then we're going to look at CrowdStrike, the uh, cloud cybersecurity firm, and then Salesforce. So the uh -huh. customer relations management firm that is so popular Three great stocks. I was just going to say, three great stocks. I pulled them up on the Thinkorswim platform as you were walking through them. Uh, give us a little teaser on Chewy, if you don't mind. Boy, I haven't pulled up that stock recently, and man, that is quite a pullback. We're at $27 and change. Looks like almost coming into the lows of last year. Well off the highs, the pandemic highs of 120 What's going on with Chewy? Give us a little teaser, if you don't mind, coming up before Fast Market at 12 Yeah, this is that online uh, pet store. Basically, where you can, you know, have your pet food delivered. They're also getting into pet insurance, and medical, and all things like that. But Tommy, decelerating growth has hurt this company, right? Uh, th you know, this company got off to a really good start. It's still growing, but there's some of the growth has decelerated, and that's taken some of the premium out, out of this name. But we'll cover it today. We'll go through it. We'll, we'll give investors a good look at what to think about Chewy. And what's your expression, Kevin? I mean, that you know, at some price you might buy something, at some price you might sell it. This might be a good example right. of that chart, man. Up to one twenty. Can you? What's that expression you like to say, if you don't mind? No matter how good a company is, at some point I want to be short it. No matter how bad a company is, at some point I want to be long it. And so it. that's yeah. the that's the uh, premise of look, seeing everything through the prism of trading, right? I think markets, stocks get oversold and overbought. And that brings trading into it, not just investing.
It's a great expression, man. I'm going to write that one down, folks. Listen to that one because I think we all got a quick lesson in multiples, in growth, in, in prices during the pandemic. And it goes both ways because, boy, we got some pullbacks as well. Kevin, I appreciate the time, as always, man, on a busy morning. We'll be watching Fast Market at 12 today, and we look forward to talking to you tomorrow, man. Glad to hear your voice, Tommy. Stay dry there in Florida. Good to be on the air. We're safe, thanks, thankfully, here in Florida. And, uh, yeah, everyone stay safe. But we'll talk to you tomorrow, Kevin. Thanks again, man. Have a good one. Folks, check it out. You heard it. They're talking three great stocks. And boy, that's quite a chart, right? On the Thinkorswim platform, man. And it is a great expression, folks, because multiples are everything. As Kevin's saying, what made me think about that expression is they're still growing, right? So this isn't like things go out of whack in terms of a company just starts losing business left and right. But guess what? They're not living up to the multiples, okay? They're overpriced at, at, at some point, folks, even great companies, OK, get overpriced. And at some point, even bad companies, right, get underpriced. So keep that in mind, because we are dealing with some pretty lofty multiples. Uh, the number one culprit of that in this market might be NVIDIA. And NVIDIA this morning, you're going to open up by about two bucks. Doesn't mean you can't go higher. But boy, when you got to live up to those multiples, man, guess what? NVIDIA, they aren't going to be shrinking anytime soon. But boy, to live up to those multiples, the growth they have to accomplish in the near future, uh, not easy, to put it lightly. All right, folks, stay tuned. We're coming back for the open. Don't go away. With rising inflation, rocketing interest rates, a volatile dollar, an uncertain market, there's an asset that all traders flock back to, gold. However, these irregular times also mean a regular gold market, which presents its own unique challenges. This brings up the question, what moves the gold market? This is a question I'll be answering in my next live webinar. On August 30th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a live free webinar for all those who subscribe to my newsletter, The Gold Report. The Gold Report has been in publication for over two decades, and I've seen just about every market gold has been traded in. This experience lends me great insight when trading gold and other mining equities, and now that insight can be yours. On August 30th, I will deep dive into gold, bonds, and the dollar, where they are now, how they affect each other, and what to look for when looking to set up a trade. Additionally, I will provide a comprehensive breakdown of the XAU, HUI, and GDX, as well as cover individual gold equities and answer questions live on the air. Subscribe to the Gold Report today so you don't miss this rare moment in gold. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We get markets open right now. You got an S&P up by about four points. We have all the markets in the green. Well, Russell actually still in the red by about three. We got to keep our eye on yields, man, as this market is just rocking. Yields pulling back a bit. As Kevin mentioned, yeah, pretty remarkable to remember that we're at 4.36, 4.36 on a 10-year. We're now under 4.10. Under 4.1 is another way to say it right now. The yield on the 10-year, that, of course, impacting the dollar index uh, as we are approaching a 102 handle on the dollar index from a 104 handle just about 24 hours ago. We'll talk a little bit more about that with our man Teddy Kegstat coming up after the break. But right now, folks, we're going to talk a little bit of Gold Report. I talked about at the beginning of the program. Today's the day, folks. Gold Report subscriber webinar. Now, listen, for you Gold Report subscribers out there, you already gained free access to this webinar coming up at four o'clock. If you can't attend live, don't worry. It will be archived. If you get a chance to attend, why not? But don't worry, that will be archived on your subscriber page uh, and Tom will be in there. What moves the gold market? And we got a great day for it, man. And the reason why he's doing this webinar, folks, all right, and I'm not gonna speak for him, but time is of the essence. He thinks this might be a good time. He thinks that yields may have topped out to some degree, right? Maybe that's gonna drive the dollar lower and maybe that's going to drive gold higher. I'm using the words maybe. I'm not sure he's going to use the words maybe when he's in there at 4 till 5. Uh, so please join, check it out. You can subscribe right now, folks. It comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. And sometimes I always stress this, right? We always have subscribers. Sometimes they sign up and then they call the cancel for a 30 day money back guarantee. And they're almost apologizing. And I say, don't even think about it, man. I say, thank you. Thank you for trying out the letter. That's the point of a 30 day money back guarantee. I love giving people a 30 day money back guarantee. I wish it stayed on, okay? But all we want is the opportunity, folks, okay? Get in there. If you don't want the letter, we don't want you to be a subscriber if you're not gonna use it, okay? So there's no harm, no foul in canceling and getting that 30 day money back guarantee. I say thank you for the opportunity. And it's a real deal, man. Thank you for the opportunity. Come in here, sign up for the Gold Report. You get it for a month. You get the archive webinar. You get the live webinar tonight from four till five. You get the archive for 30 days in there. And you can't go wrong, folks. You know you learned something in there with my dad. He's been writing this gold report for 21 and a half years. Think about it. Every single week for 21 and a half years, he has sat down, whether it's Sunday night or Monday morning, and written a full issue of the gold report. There's nothing like experience in this market. And the last couple of days would hint to the fact that he might be on to something, as usual, folks, uh, as we got the dollar tanking, we have gold rising, and we have yields coming down. And if you've been in the gold market, you're familiar that a weakening dollar is going to help gold, to put it lightly. So check out the gold report, folks. That's in at 4 o'clock. And don't wait until the last second to get in there, okay? Because if you're not in the Discord room, we got to get you in there. Even if you are in the Discord room, we have to manually tag you. Only takes about a minute or two, okay? But give us some time. Get in there, sign up. You'll gain access to Monday's newsletter in the Gold Report. I think Tom has four active positions right now in the Gold Report. Uh, some of those positions, at least, at areas that you still might be able to enter. Now, I say that today. Gold's been rocking a little bit over the last couple of days. Uh, don't miss out, folks. Four o'clock today. All right. What else we got going on? Let's talk a little bit of jobs as we get private payrolls this morning ahead of that Friday number that Kevin was talking about. Private payrolls, 177,000 in August, below expectations. The only thing I will say is a disclaimer is that ADP is way off from the non-farm payroll sometimes on Friday. Yes, you can use it as a gauge, okay? But sometimes those numbers vary wildly in terms of how they differentiate in terms of ADP private versus the non-farm payroll numbers that come out on Friday. Nonetheless, 177,000 jobs in August. What's interesting is, how do they know how many jobs are added in August? When guess what? August ain't over until tomorrow, folks, nonetheless. Uh, well below the revised total of 371,000 in July. The market was looking for 200 in terms of what they were looking for on the survey. They reported that pay growth slowed for workers who changed jobs and those that stayed in their jobs. Now, I thought I saw those numbers somewhere else. We'll get those numbers later in the program. Let me see if I refresh it. No, we're not there yet. Yeah, because sometimes these numbers, I mean, so what they'll say is wage growth has slowed, but I'm pretty sure it's still pushing like 6% wage growth if you're staying in the same job and 12 to 13% if you're changing jobs. Those are some lofty numbers, to put it lightly, folks, in terms of wage numbers. Look at this gold contract, man. Look at this. 
It's a great day to have a Gold Report webinar, folks. For you Gold Report subscribers out there, I'm sure it'll be a good one. And uh, for you considering signing up, today's a great day as uh, the things that Tom is going to be talking about are already playing out yesterday and today. When we were launching this, I was talking to my dad. He was excited to do a Gold Report webinar. He said he wanted to get it going ASAP. We had this week going. He said, ah, you know, it's a little bit tough coming into Labor Day weekend, right? We're doing a live event on the Wednesday before a long weekend. I know for you Northeastern residents up there in the Boston, Massachusetts, Northeast, New York, whatever it be, Connecticut, Rhode Island uh, area, this is the last weekend of the summer. So many times people are taking off maybe the last week of August. You go away for Labor Day. You come back. The kids are in school. But guess what? He's like, no way, man. We're doing this right now because this is happening right now. I think yields may have topped out. I think we're coming into a deflation, not deflation. No, he didn't say that. We're coming into an area where prices are pulling back. We may have less demand. That could hurt lower yields. That could have a weaker dollar and that could have a stronger gold contract so he's like let's do it wednesday i don't care if it's the last week of the summer it's too important to get in there right now so nonetheless he'll be in there tonight at four o'clock and he's right that look at what's happened over the last two days okay he can't even wait a week folks who knows where gold's going to be the way this market's moving right now as kevin just mentioned we just moved from 4.36 to 4.1 folks in a week 4.36 to 4.1 in a week in the tenure so my dad's on to something. Get in there tonight at 4 o'clock and check it out. I'm going to be in there tonight with the kids watching that Gold Report webinar as well. All right. What else we got going on? We talked about jobs. We talked about uh, GDP. Yeah. And we talk. Uh, let's see what else. Let's see how the FANG stocks are doing right now. Amazon pulling back a bit, down about half a percent this morning on maybe those GDP numbers. You got Apple up half a percent right now. You jump over to Microsoft shares. Down about a quarter percent. Google shares this morning right now trading down about a quarter percent. We jump over to Tesla shares. Tesla trading down 1.7 percent right now. And you know what I'm going to pull up, folks? This one's this one's a bummer. But we're going to digress a bit as we come into this break. Okay, and let me see if I can pull it up quickly because you know Elon catches a lot of grief unfairly. I would say, okay. But what is Interesting to a certain degree, and I'm not going to be able to pull this up quicker, quick enough. Excuse me. All right, I'll find it towards the end of the program and what I was going to talk about here. All right, forgive me. I was trying to pull it up. Is that it? No, it's not. Let me see. This might be it. Yeah, okay. So. In Saudi Arabia right now, okay, they're going after. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna save that one for later. I'm gonna save that one for later. All right, because we're coming back from the break. We're talking to our man Teddy Cakes. Dad, today is too important of a day not to stay on this market, man. When we get yields rocking lower to 4.1, we got the dollar index right now. With a 103 handle, we just hit 10301. We'll be coming back. We'll talk some commodities. We'll talk some currencies with our man Teddy Kegstad. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. With rising inflation, rocketing interest rates, a volatile dollar, an uncertain market, there's an asset that all traders flock back to gold. However, these irregular times also mean a regular gold market, which presents its own unique challenges. This brings up the question, what moves the gold market? This is a question I'll be answering in my next live webinar. 
On August 30th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a live free webinar for all those who subscribe to my newsletter, The Gold Report. The Gold Report has been in publication for over two decades, and I've seen just about every market gold has been traded in. This experience lends me great insight when trading gold and other mining equities, and now that insight can be yours. On August 30th, I will deep dive into gold, bonds, and the dollar, where they are now, how they affect each other, and what to look for when looking to set up a trade. Additionally, I will provide a comprehensive breakdown of the XAU, HUI, and GDX, as well as cover individual gold equities and answer questions live on the air. Subscribe to the Gold Report today so you don't miss this rare moment in gold. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P right now up by about five points, trading at 45.11. 45.11, we have some action in the dollar, as we've been talking about. We got some action in yields. Great day to jump over to talk to our man, Teddy Kegstad, who writes the Tiger Forex Report. Folks, you can check out Teddy's great work on the Tiger Forex Report. He puts out weekly issues every week. He talks about the Forex market. He ties in bonds, of course, yields. He ties in commodities in there as well. You can get all of our newsletters under the newsletter tab. There you will see the Tiger Forex report. You can sign up for $97. The other thing I encourage you to check out is he just did an outstanding candlestick webinar. That's a standalone product. He talked a lot, a lot of great strategies in there. You can check that one out under the services tab. Uh, but let's get right into it. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. I hope you guys are doing well down there. Thanks so much. We are, man. We're, we're fortunate uh, where we are, especially in Florida. The offices are open in St. Pete. Uh, we got about 20 to 30 mile an hour wind steady, so it's not nothing. You know, you're aware something's going right. on. We got some rain, but thankfully dodged the most of it. And hopefully everybody stays safe a little bit further north than us because some visuals out there, some flooding and whatnot. But thankfully we're doing OK. Uh, great day to have you on, man. Where do you want to kick it off? Boy, we got some action in yields. We got some economic data. We got some action in the dollar. Uh, what are you looking at in this market, Teddy? Where do you want to kick things off this morning? Well, I have three things I want to cover today. Um, one are the economic releases over the next two days. Two is a breakdown of the uh, FX pairs. And also three, I have uh, two predictions that are going to light up your chat room. So what do you I want like to talk it. about first? I like it. Let's. You, I, I like the order you marched them through, if you don't mind. Let's, let's talk about okay. some of that economic data. Yeah. Okay, so we know we're heading into holiday markets. So tomorrow you got to look out for the German retail sales and the unemployment number. That could have a little stir up for the euro. Plus you also have EU unemployment that will also amplify those two numbers. So that's big for the euro US dollar and also probably a little bit for the pound as well. Then we have US jobless claims tomorrow. That could probably be not really too much to worry about unless it comes really out of whack. Um, Friday we have obviously US unemployment. So those are the numbers that could impact the dollar obviously and the euro and also the pound and maybe a little bit of the Swiss so those are th over the next two days something to look at um, especially because by Friday after the unemployment I would say just go and start your vacation because like you mentioned people this is the last week of the summer across the board so now I'm gonna give you a breakdown of the of the markets so the dollar index right now is leaning on our 103.02 to 102.64 short-term downside correction zone. So I see the, the dollar index still to be under pressure over the next 24 to 48 hours. Um, crude oil fell just short of our 76.85 sell-off objective the other day. Now we're looking for a sideways to higher trade. 
we could go either way, obviously, in the short and long term. But right now, I'm looking for sideways to higher. I wish it was lower. I wish I had better news for you. Um, 30 year poking near our uh, critical long term directional pivot level at 121.21. We have an upside target zone of around 123.04 to 123.01 in that little area right there. So I see that yields could still come back a little bit more over the next couple of sessions in the next week. Overall trend obviously is a bear, but right now we're kind of in a short term higher to neutral trade. Um, let's get to the Euro US dollar. Pressing the one oh nine, uh, the dollar oh nine thirty one upside breakout level. And I think that overall we could get up to our 110.29 upside target. That's in the short run, especially if the numbers don't come out of whack too much. British pound also on a nice little bounce. We have the upside target of around 128.75 to 129.30. I think that's about all you're going to see. Let's see what happens after the holiday and the reactions, um, especially with the numbers that come out over the next two days. U.S. dollar switch is eyeballing our 108, excuse me, our, our 86.91 downside breakout level. I, no matter what, this market, as I've been saying all year, is an overall bear. Even if the dollar does start to retreat, don't, or excuse me, even if the dollar does get strong again, don't expect much out of the U.S. dollar Swiss trade. U.S. dollar JPY, this might help with the gold scenario. Um, we locked in, it's looking a little toppy right now in the short term. If the U.S. dollar continues to slip, then I think the 145, uh, 145.09 directional pivot level is in play. That's kind of a big area for the yen, especially if we can sustain a trade below that area. That puts us really at a 142.17 to 141.03 support band where I think you could get a correction down to at least if the dollar is only in a short term pullback. That would be, a, I think, a good target zone. That would also help the gold uh, uh, markets. Australian dollar has a nice bounce going on. Overall, a big bear, but right now it's in a nice uh, profit taking bounce. I think the, the sell signal we had the other day was obviously negated today in the Tiger Report for those that um, get the uh, newsletter. And I think right now we're looking at an area of 66.27 to 66.92 as the top for the upside correction. I don't think you're going to get much beyond that just because Australia's economy fundamentally is in the gutter. Then we have the New Zealand dollar, which has pierced the upside breakout level, and that's targeting around the 60.086 to 61.60 area. Also, I think that's about the extreme that you'll see for a pullback profit-taking move. U.S. dollar Canada, that just fell short of our upside target level the other day at 136.51. Bearish correction could accelerate if we tick below the 134.97 downside breakout level. That's a key area. Remember, the U.S. dollar Canada has had a very strong upward slope. So for it to pull back to that area is very, very likely and not something that's out of the, you know, it's not like something that's off the, the charts. Um, the uh, correction zone is, is the it's pretty much, uh, excuse me, the uh, 133.92 to 133.43 downside correction area is the ex extended sell-off objective for that market. Okay, so that's what I think about the FX pairs and the things to look out for the next two days. Once again, by Friday morning after unemployment, go on vacation. Now comes the two predictions I have that are going to blow your mind. All right. Go. CP CPI will be at least 25% higher over the next 15 to 18 months. The CRB index will be 40% higher over the next 15 to 18 months. Let's talk about it. <laughs> That's <laughs> <laughs> um, so where do you get those numbers from, man? Those are lofty numbers when we're talking about potentially turning the corner here for inflation. Um, you just seeing persistence there? Are we seeing anything dramatically when you talk about CPI to that degree? Where, where are you getting that kind of analysis? Well, I think that as global slowdown, I, I predict that global slowdown is going to be collapsing over the next definitely six to 18 months. If that prediction is right, that's going to mean we're going to have more supply chain issues. We're also going to have a lot of issues in the agricultural industry, which is under attack um, globally right now. And if that continues, if we don't have a turn where people start to say no to what governments are doing to the farmers and all the other people that produce commodities around the world, it's a no-brainer that you're going to have a real, really large jump in inflationary pricing in food, oil, metals, all of those things. So that also helps gold in a big in a big way because sure. if gold is a hedge against inflation, if we do have the CRB accelerate in a big way, you can see gold up 50% over the next 15, or excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, 12 to 18 months. 
Yeah, it's, it's, we're all getting a quick lesson, man, and not a quick lesson. We're all getting a lesson in terms of the type of volatility. And, you know, you mentioned gold. Of course, we've been talking about my dad's got a gold report webinar, so I'm a little biased, of course, as he is. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is remarkable when you put that gold even on a much longer term chart that, to consider that we were at, you know, 19. We're at like almost where we we're trading at right now in the year 2011 in gold. Now, you made it down mm -hmm. to 1100 bucks, but boy, you talk about volatility, and maybe it's just time to see some higher prices with the type of inflation that we have in terms of stores of value. Well, Teddy, I appreciate the time as always. I know you got a little vacation, just like uh, everybody maybe in the Northeast as we near the end of the summer, but I appreciate you coming on, enlightening us as always, man. Have a great week. Have a great Labor Day weekend, and I look forward to talking to you next week, man, as always. And, uh, yeah, are you, uh, you're covering my program next week, actually, this Wednesday, I right? will be next Wednesday, Perfect. correct. So, folks, tune in. You heard the education. Um, Teddy's going to be covering the program next week. I really appreciate that as I'm out for the day, and we look forward to it, man. So we'll talk to you next week, Teddy. Thanks, Tommy. Take care. Thanks so much. Have a great one. Folks, we'll be right back. This brings up the question, what moves the gold market? This is a question that I'll be answering in my next live webinar. On August 30th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a live free webinar for all those who subscribe to my newsletter, The Gold Report. The Gold Report has been in publication for over two decades, and I've seen just about every market gold has been traded in. This experience lends me great insight when trading gold and other mining equities, and now that insight can be yours. On August 30th, I will deep dive into gold, bonds, and the dollar, where they are now, how they affect each other, and what to look for when looking to set up a trade. Additionally, I will provide a comprehensive breakdown of the XAU, HUI, and GDX, as well as cover individual gold equities and answer questions live on the air. Subscribe to the Gold Report today so you don't miss this rare moment in gold. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. All right, folks, welcome back as we wrap up the program here. And please uh, check out the Gold Report subscriber webinar going on tonight right now. We got markets picking up positive action right now with the S&Ps accelerating higher. We're positive by 16 points at 45.23. Crude contract nearing $82 right now. You got the gold contract accelerating up to 1975 pushing session highs right now. You jumped in notes and bonds. We got a higher price, lower yield. So you have a lower yield. You have a weaker dollar. Stronger commodities, stronger market in there as well. We jump over to the dollar index right now. Dollar index, 
We got it. There's your 102 handle, 102.98 in the dollar index. So don't forget, folks, head on over to the front page of TFNN right now. You will see the Gold Report right up there. If you're already subscribed to the Gold Report, as I mentioned, you gain free access, folks. You're all set. Um, if you've missed any of the emails, you have any questions, feel free. You can always email sales at TFNN.com. You can reach me, Tommy, at TFNN.com. Uh, our man Jacob, who does a great job uh, running most of these live webinars, you can email him as well, jacob at tfnn.com. So if you're already a member of the Gold Report and you're unsure of getting into the den, please email us ahead of time. And folks, check it out on the front page of TFNN tonight, 4 till 5. Great day for a Gold Report webinar. All right, we jump a little bit to Mr. Elon Musk and his freedom of speech endeavor. And I say that tongue in cheek because one of his biggest investors out there is from Saudi Arabia and you got the Saudis sentencing people to death for basically criticism of their leadership on Twitter and what I find so remarkable out here is that Elon Elon's not chirping at anybody yeah he's out there retweeting Tucker Carlson um, he's out there retweeting autopilot but what do you think would happen if America was sentencing the people to die because of the way that they were critiquing leadership on Twitter? And that's basically what's going on in Saudi Arabia. And you have um, one of the biggest investors in that private company is a Saudi businessman. OK, and so this gentleman, unfortunately, over in Saudi Arabia, sentenced to die. Um, and Human Rights Watch saying the accounts that he was posting, basically retweeting criticism of the crown prince over there but if you're paying attention you know how they get um even when they are american residents as we all know so keep that in mind when elon is out there saying it's all about being able to be the town square where you can express yourself freely we'll end on that note folks sign up for the gold report stay tuned back